Like sands through the hourglass, so is the speed of internet service in rural America. These experiences are compiled through millions of true stories in small towns. And it's educational! All right, all right, we'll have order. Let's bring it down a little so we can talk about this. On the agenda today, Mr. Clark Kagi is going to do a short presentation on CenturyLink. For corn's sake, usually there isn't anyone at these town council meetings. Now, all of a sudden, the whole town shows up to talk about internet access? Since you're on the city council, you should know how bad this is. We've all been talking, and we didn't know anyone else was having the same problems here in Villageville. Well, thank you, Deputy, but I live here too, and I understand that our provider isn't offering the kind of connectivity we need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Uh-huh. They suck. Affirmative. And as your town council, we've met with them and asked them to upgrade and CenturyLink. You mean last CenturyLink, ha! <laughs> CenturyLink says their DSL is just fine. And no other providers will come here. We're stuck with what we have. Oh, come on, come on. Did you have something to say, Emily? Step up to the podium, please. Yes, Emily, step up. Counselor, I'm an entrepreneur, and many of the people here are clients of mine. I work with farmers in rural communities like Villageville using technology to help them increase their crop yields. Yes, you've worked with my dad at his farm. That's right, and I'd like to work with other people in the community, but without high-quality connectivity, it's almost impossible. It's the same for many other people I speak with who would like to start their own businesses, but, but they can't. In order to do that, they have to move to the city. Yeah, yeah, stupid city. Yeah, Connie, listen to that gal. She knows what she's talking about. All right, all right. We've been doing some research, and Villageville can build its own fiber network. Now just hold on, Dave. There's a bill at the state legislature that's in committee that would make what you propose illegal. But who do those jerks think they are? We can decide for ourselves what to do with our own money. We just want the internet. Order, order, come on, people. When I heard that there would be a big crowd at the meeting tonight, I asked Mr. Clark Kagey, an attorney at CenturyLink, to come to the meeting to explain the bill to us. Mr. Kagey, you have the floor. Hello, wonderful people of Villageville. How are you all tonight? So happy to be here to tell you how this new bill, written by yours truly, is going to protect you taxpayers from all those nasty government-owned internet boondoggles. Um, actually, this bill is like all the others that you lobbyists try to push through to prevent competition, so we're stuck with your crummy service. Now that's just silly, little lady. Everything we do, we do for our customers, especially the people here in Townsville. Dastardly doter doesn't even know what town he's in. Order! Order! Please, everyone, quiet down. Emily, what are you talking about? Mr. Kagey isn't here to explain the bill, Connie. He's here to trick us into thinking that CenturyLink has our best interests in mind when they know perfectly well that they're going to keep things just as they are. Now that's just silly. We're thinking of you all. We want what's best for you in this great country. You don't oppose what makes America great, do you? Along with companies like AT&T and Comcast, Clark here and his lobbyist buddies write laws that take away local authorities from communities to build networks they need. They pretend to be solving a problem, but the truth is that most communities that have built their own networks are very happy they did it. I can't believe we even have to listen to these companies that have screwed us year after year. They come in and corrupt our communities, and now our elected officials are asking them for advice? No kidding. So they write the bill, then take it to the state capitol and get some uninformed legislator to sponsor it. A lobbyist's job is to convince a lawmaker to pass bills, and the lobbyists outnumber the legislators, so it isn't hard to spread a misinformation around at the capitol. Around 20 or so states have these laws already. You mean these are state laws that tell us how to spend our own money? That's right. Well, I don't think I like that. We're helping to protect you. 
but we're still waiting for you to improve internet access here. You've been telling Villageville for years that CenturyLink would be marketing services better someday. Yeah, when? We want it now. I have a son who lives in Missouri and the electric co-op offers internet access. Good service too, and it's cheap. What's that, Gary? Yep, my son gets electricity and broadband access from Como Electric. Fiber to the home, he gets 100 megabits for $50 a month, and they don't even raise his bill every time he turns around. Just give him good service and they don't try to bankrupt him. Oh now, how can an electric provider bring you all internet access? It is very complicated, I assure you. I think that's something we need to investigate. Who wants to contact Power People's Cooperative and ask them about broadband? We're all members. I'll do it! What? No, wait a minute. Thank you, Mr. Kagey. You can leave now. By the way, what committee did you say is hearing that bill next? The House Utilities Committee next Wednesday. Why? Who wants to go to a committee meeting? Hey, I'll go. I'll I'll go. go. I'll go. I'll go. I'm a Will the people of Villageville stop the bad bill at the state capitol? Will their electric cooperative start offering broadband service? Will CenturyLink's someday ever arrive? Find out in the next episode of From Crops to Co-Ops, Small Towns Want Better Internet Access.